Greetings, bookworms, and welcome to the Bearded Book Club's production of Sky Zen by Mark Gregson. If you want to follow along in this and all of our productions, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified of all new videos as well as when we do our live shows. If you would like to support Bearded Book Club, you could do so in two ways, both of which are listed in this video's description. Number one, you can become a member of the YouTube channel and or become a patron and support us on a regular basis. Or number two, you can go to our Amazon wish list and send us a book as a one-time donation. So without further ado, let us continue. Chapter 8 Two days later, I'm on the skyship's deck as Hunter's Island, Venator, crawl, grows in the distance. I lean forward, hands on the railing, while the humid evening air fills my lungs. Venator's an enormous jungled island, twice as large as Homestead, with dozens of islets encircling it. A hot breeze rushes through my hair, but I hardly notice because of my trim hunter's uniform. A black harpoon symbol marks my right breast. The uniform keeps me cool. Still, I unzip the black hunter jacket, letting it flap. Veins of waterfalls lace the numerous peaks of Venator. A mountain range separates the island's two cities, East Dock and West Dock. The cities appear gorgeous from afar. Golden twinkles fill their streets, but the two couldn't be more different. Tourists fill East Dock, which borders a giant lake strut with sandy beaches and luxurious villas of Venator's Highs. Meanwhile, the rugged hunters occupy West Dock. It's not a place to kick up your feet and relax. Instead of sandy beaches, the rustic buildings cling to a rocky lake shore at the base of a steep mountain range. There are no mansions, very few homes, but plenty of taverns to get a hot meal and a drink. Apparently drinking is how hunters cope with all the death in their trade. We zoom for West Dock. And once we approach, we follow a line of skyships waiting to make port. Skyships from across the skylands arrive, some with tall bridges towering over the decks, or masts rather than crystal engines, and a few have ancient wooden hulls. All of them bring hunters' latest selections. Below us, dozens of figures walk the wooden docks, streaming towards West Dock and the benches surrounding the fires that burn in rocky pits. Then something silver fires across the sky, a thin ship. It shoots away from the island, deck shimmering under Venator's lights. It slices through the air, beautiful. One of the newest ships I've been hearing about, Predator Class, also known as Sword of the Sky. It rockets into the distance at incredible velocity, off to the hunt. Protect the islands, fight the Gorgantan threat. I shake my head in awe. How soon until I'm aboard one of those ships? How soon until I command one? Pound watches the ship with a smug expression, like he'll lead one someday. Our gangway slaps onto the planks and we disembark. Bryce moves ahead, smiling as she breathes air that smells like sweet fruit. Her blue eyes shift to mine. I look away. My boots meet the dock's boards and I follow the line of hunter selections, all in uniform, bottlenecking through the dock's exits, heading to join the other selection sitting around the fire pits. Countless voices buzz. Standing at the end of the dock under two giant crystal torches, a grizzled hunter veteran presses a hand against my chest. Name an island. Conrad of Elise from Homestead. He checks my name on the notepad. Join the other selections until Master Coco arrives. Heat gushes around the fire pits. Rising smoke keeps the bugs away. All the selections network with one another. Smiling falsely, searching for someone whom it'll be advantage advantageous to know. Their words feign interest. Friendship. But really they're using one another until the day they rise. Then they'll watch from warm doorways as their so-called friends are crushed beneath their heels. Uncle taught me that when he murdered father. My right hand squeezes father's cane. I'll not make the same mistake again. I won't let others in. I sit on my luggage near the wet jungle's breath on the outskirts of the light and laughter and swat the irritating bugs away. From here I study my opponents. Some selections are brutish, some gorgeous. They've come from across the skylands black and brown and pale. These are the strongest of their islands, the smartest, the most cunning, and they all stand in my way. For uncle, it isn't enough that I'm selected. That's the easy part. 
The challenge is becoming the best of Hunter, climbing through the ranks, becoming captain. Then, I'll be offered Irwin. Be next in line for Archduke on Homestead Island. Someone steps into my view. It's strange, Bryce says. We're on the same ship for two days, and yet I hardly know you. Not much to know. She lowers onto a log before me. Well, you used to be the heir of Irwin. I think that's quite a lot to know. Have you been asking about me? Pound told me all about it. He really hates you, by the way. He's an idiot. Is he? Why did you stay in your room the whole trip? I think I saw you in the cafeteria just once. I prefer to being alone. She glances at the bugs humming around my neck and smirks. Well, you're not alone now. I wave a couple of mosquitoes away. She laughs, noticing my discomfort. Come on, let's meet a few people together. Not much of a mingler. That's a shame. Why? Because you're not like the others here, she says. You're a jerk, but at least you don't pretend to be anyone else. I found honesty in the Skylands to be a rare virtue. Whoever you are, Conrad, you're real. She grins a little, and half of me wouldn't mind being around her more. But the other half, the deep voice of father, fires warnings. She is your opponent, he whispers. Get close to her and she'll hurt you, just like everyone else. So will you join me? She asks. No. Her face wrinkles with disappointment. For an instant I think she'll try convincing me. Instead she stands. You realize you'll never rise in Hunter if you turn everyone away, right? Soon it's just me and the mosquitoes again. I try to ignore her as she weaves through the crowds, and I look away when she softly touches a guy's arm while they talk. Beyond her, it seems Pound already has a following, girls giggling at his height and trying and try lifting his enormous arms above their heads. Boys flock to him, too, because that's where the girls are. Suddenly, the jungle comes alive with the banging of drums. Everyone quiets as our master, Coco Vito, appears. She stands on a slope, looking over us. Out of her traditional robe, and in a silver hunter uniform and black jacket, she holds a commanding presence. A gang of the meanest hunter veterans stand behind her, hardened men and women. Welcome to Venator, Master Coco says. She points to the people behind her. These are your trainers. They'll teach you the ways of hunter and all the stations on a skyship, from captain to swabby. Their job is to ensure you don't die. No one makes a sound. Soon you'll be divided into crews that'll command a skyship, she says. You'll compete in the gauntlet, where you'll hunt the mighty southern Gorgantons. The crew with the most kills will win wild riches. The captain of that ship will also win the ship itself. A few thrilled whispers spread. Don't get too excited, she says. Last year, 26 selections didn't make it back. Take a good long look at your neighbors or yourself, because chances are, many of you won't return. Silence again. A smile wrinkles her face. So who's hungry? The trainers laugh. Moments later, we file up the dirt trail, carrying our luggage into the jungle. Bugs eat our skin while our foreheads become slick with sweat. Once we exit the trees, we start up a long slope blanketed in grass. Fortunately, my luggage is light. The same can't be said for some of the people ahead of me. When we reach the top of the first hill, I wipe my forehead and stare at the mountains above us. The Hunter Academy spreads along the rocky slope. Its dozens of ancient buildings are built of stone and covered in vines. The academy is so large it could be a town itself. We stand around, hands on our hips, hearts racing. One boy falls over, his stomach rising with each inhale. Stand up, Robert of Smith, Master Coco scolds. I'm nearly 80 and I make this trek every year. It is time for you to rise, for all of you to rise. This is your initiation. All new hunters must make the hike to the academy. It is tradition. She looks us over. Hopefully your luggage, Samantha of Talba, contains only necessary things. Her eyes smile at the persisting brunette standing next to four bags of luggage. The girl aghast searches for help. None comes until a bearded boy lifts two of her bags. Thank you, Roderick of Madison, Master Coco says. Well then, shall we? And with the trainers in tow, she starts on the path, snaking up the mountain toward the great doors of the academy. As others follow her, I breathe deeply and stroke the smooth gold of Ella's necklace. Then I take the first step toward the place where I'll learn to rise in Hunter. <laughs>